in um, 1977, vegetarian cooking had the uncertain appeal of leftovers from the hippie era, as dreary as chugging along in a wheezing VW bus painted with fading peace symbols. That was before Molly Katzen wrote, illustrated, and published the Moosewood Cookbook. As an art student, Molly chose to eat meatless because it was an easy way to keep kosher. Then she worked several vegetarian restaurants, including the Moosewood in Ithaca, New York. Customers liked what they tasted, curries and crepes and pilafs and kugels. So Molly organized and standardized the recipes. That collection grew humbly at first, from a spiral notebook to a local publisher who issued several printings. Eventually, 10 Speed Press released the book nationally, complete with Molly's distinctive hand lettering and drawings. And it became one of the best-selling cookbooks of all time. Molly Katzen moved to California, which after all is the nation's salad bowl, and wrote more bestsellers, including The Enchanted Broccoli Forest. She also wrote children's cookbooks. She became a member of the Harvard Nutrition Roundtable at the Harvard School of Public Health, and its chairman wrote a book on healthy eating with him. In 1999, Health Magazine named Molly Katzen one of the five women who changed the way we eat. Indeed, she has influenced us to put broccoli, spinach, or squash, and sometimes all three, on our plates at every meal. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Molly Katzen. Let me take you down to Zambia. I was wondering what song they were going to play for me. <laughs> it's so perfect. I'm so moved. Could you just talk among yourselves for a sec? Um, 34 years ago, I was sitting in my little cafe in upstate New York, uh, staying late after each shift to jot some semblance of a recipe down and napkins for the customers who wanted some idea of what it was we were cooking kind of intuitively from whatever the, our, our produce growing friends had brought in that morning and I never well after a certain point I, f I figured out I could paper clip some of the napkins together and it was somewhat of a cookbook and later on um, we, the uh, Xerox place opened up down the street and the first edition of the Moosewood cookbook was literally collated by hand and um, bound by hand and I had, I mean, the, the distance from there to here, in, in, uh, in addition to being 34 years, is, is great. And I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I want to acknowledge a man who unfortunately could not be here tonight. His name is Phil Wood. He's the founder of 10 Speed Press. At the time when he found me, he had about two books um, in publication. One was a bicycle book and one was a career a counseling book. Uh, Ten Speed Press was one guy in an apartment above a store in Berkeley, California, and he um, he recognized that there was something about my book. I didn't recognize it, he did. And he said to me, um, I'm just going to take this book and put it out in the world, and we're going to sit there and wait for people to discover it. And it took several years, but it was due to his patience and his belief in this hand-lettered, very funky book that if I had known people who were not my friends and family were going to buy it, I might have hired someone to type it up instead of writing it by hand. So I, I want to acknowledge him. Unfortunately, as I said, he can't be here. Um, he, his company, 10 Speed Press, has grown into one of the, I think, one of the three largest uh, cookbook publishers in, in the country. Um, and so I thank Phil Wood. And I also thank the independent booksellers and independent bookselling representatives without whom, or a dying breed, and without whom I don't think this book would even be known to anyone. Um, and thank you to them. But most of all, I want to thank the James Beard Foundation. Um, I feel that through recognizing this book, um, it's a portal for recognizing, um, in a bigger sense, garden and orchard-based cooking. 
and it's thrilling to see this coming into the center of the plate more and more. So thank you very much. Very honored. Thank you.